Our daily lives are increasingly experienced through virtual identities. Consider Naima, for example. Every time she communicates through a social media profile, plays as a video game character, takes on a role as a virtual reality avatar, or accesses an e-commerce account, she is using a virtual identity. As technology develops, Naima will be able to create virtual selves that are increasingly advanced. They may look convincingly realistic or rendered in a more expressionistic, painterly way. In systems like social media or e-commerce sites, she may be able to sculpt her online image more carefully, using an automated system to convey a selection of posts, photos, and comments designed especially for the person viewing them. It's tempting to think of virtual identities such as avatars as blank slates of possibility, technologies that we can use to become whomever we choose to be. But the truth is, elements from our physical world identities inevitably bleed into our virtual identities. At their best, virtual identities can help us to imagine ourselves in empowering new ways. However, at their worst, virtual identities can reproduce discrimination, biases, and stereotypes with devastating impacts on users, ranging from bullying to acts of violence. As the lines between our digital and physical worlds become increasingly blurred, it is imperative that developers and users of these systems take heed of their impacts. I'm Fox Harrell, a professor in both the Comparative Media Studies program and the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at MIT. A part of what I do is research and develop virtual identity technologies to enable their most empowering uses and avoid their worst. I founded and direct the Imagination, Computation, and Expression Laboratory, called the ICE Lab for short, to invent new forms of computational narrative, video games, social media, VR, and related types of digital media. Today's virtual identities lack the social nuance and complexity found in physical world identities. In the physical world, our identities include our facial expressions, body language, fashion, personalities, life experiences, and even our senses of self. Without this additional nuance, stereotypes and prejudices perpetuated by virtual identities can be even more damaging. Such lack of nuance also limits the kinds of stories we can tell, worlds we can build, and the identities expressed within them. Historically, the arts have provided ways to challenge and overwrite these stereotypes and prejudices. I am inspired by artists such as Samuel R. Delaney, Carol Walker, Yasumasa Morimura, and Prince. These artists create transgressive and transformative characters, fictitious personas, and styles of self-presentation in their forms of media production. For the future of digital storytelling, I believe that we must expand the expressive range of the computer to create culturally rich stories and ways to express our identities within them. Advancing the state of the art of virtual identities isn't just about technical advances, it means pushing forward our ability to model and simulate sociocultural phenomena in nuanced ways. The ICE Lab addresses this challenge through two types of research and development. On the analysis side, we build a tool called Airvitar that reveals patterns in how people customize and use virtual identities. This allows us to reveal biases that creators may or may not have been aware of. For example, we have used the Airvitar system to discover and demonstrate statistical patterns of racial and gender discrimination in video games. On the creation side, just as engineers develop authoring platforms to support implementing computer graphics or video game mechanics, we have created an AI-based engine called Chimeria for simulating more interesting and complex social interactions. It can support developers in implementing virtual identities that can be treated differently based on factors such as where they're from, who has more money, who behaves more aggressively, and so on. Stories featuring such identities are both more plausible and more capable of sparking social reflection. Such stories should also likely have different outcomes based on users' behavioral patterns. We are applying Chimeria to other digital media systems as well. For example, using it in music streaming sites or e-commerce sites that facilitate more customized and creative types of recommendation based on the identities users exhibit in these domains. Virtual identities and computational narratives allow us opportunities to step inside different environments as different selves. We get glimpses into patterns of experience we might be otherwise unaware of. This brings enormous potential for catalyzing social awareness. The challenge is that virtual identities and new forms of storytelling are created by people who might not always be aware of the limitations of our own views. Yet this challenge, to deploy computers as subjective, cultural, and socially critical tools, to advance the state of computer-based storytelling to expose and banish our negative cultural phantasms, is one that I am game to take up.